I will now add HTTP authentication to our DataSnap server and client application. First, by going to the DataSnap server application, configuring the TDS HTTP Service Authentication Manager by implementing the HTTP Authenticate event. Then, by going to the DataSnap client application and using the T-SQL connection to pass TDS auth user and TDS auth password, the username and password to make sure that we have an HTTP authentication connection. I will also demonstrate what happens if you do not pass the authenticate user and authenticate password from the client to the server, if you will then get an error message. So let's go to the um, server container unit shared by the DataSnap server application and console server application. And inside the D TDS HTTP servers authentication manager, there's one event HTTP authenticate. And here we can implement uh, the, the event, assigning a value to valid, where we get the protocol, context, user and password information. Now, protocol and context may not be very useful in this context, but we can use the username and password. In this case, I just want to say valid equals uh, user is Bob and password is Swat. Of course, you should implement a more um, intelligent uh, check for authentication, perhaps uh, checking a username or password to get against some kind of password table or database uh, table here. Let's save the data snap server, build it, and run it again with our debugging. So the server is now waiting and using HTTP uh, authentication. We can go to the client and run the client straight away, trying to make a connection to the server. The reason that this works, running the client and making a connection, is that the client is not using HTTP at all. If we go to the client form and check the SQL connection component, Remember that I told you that by default we're using the TCP IP communication protocol over port 211. TCP IP will not support HTTP authentication. HTTP authentication is only used for an HTTP connection. So if you want to make sure that the client is actually using HTTP connection and HTTP authentication, we need to specify HTTP here. And we also need to change the port number from 211, which is TCP IP port. To 8080. And now if I run the client and we click on a button, we get an error. This error is uh, caused by the SQL connection component being already connected at design time, so it wants to connect at runtime. So let's not send this error. And we get an error message that the protocol HTTP can only be used after an adequate instance of TDDX communication layer is registered with the communication layer factory. This means that we need to add a unit to the users clause of the client application. We need to go to the client application and add the unit DS HTTP layer. And this will make sure HTTP layer. And this will make sure that the client will actually be able to use the HTTP protocol as communication protocol. So running the client for the third time. We get another error, and this time it's HTTP 1.1401 unauthorized. We get the error when we start the application because SQL connection is already connected at design time. If we change that and we make the connection at runtime, then we should get the error at runtime. So, in here, now the connection is not made. At startup time, we can now run the client, and if we click on the button, it will try to make a connection using HTTP to the server without passing the authenticated username and password. So now we get the error message 401 unauthorized. In order to solve that error message and send the HTTP authentication information, we must use the DS auth user and DS password. You can, of course, pop up a dialog where the user enters the username and password and then pass it on to this proper these properties here before you actually open up the SQL connection component. But for this demo, I will just hard code my name in these properties 
and then run the client, click on the button, and now we get the correct answer again, but this time using HTTP authentication between the client and the server to make sure there's a secure connection between the two, or at least an authenticated connection between the two. Now, one more thing, going back to the uh, server container unit, um, we both use HTTP as communication protocol and TCP uh, as communication protocol. Although HTTP is the only one secured by the HTTP authentication, and TCP is not secured by authentication, you may want to decide to remove the DCDS TCP server transport protocol from the application so the data snap server it can only use HTTP with HTTP authentication, thereby eliminating all unauthenticated TCP IP connections to the server application. This is just something to keep in mind that you may want to do.